our soul, except for the family that we stand. The eternal God is your refuge. Underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you. Haven't I commanded you to be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid. Don't be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And he said, Naked I came from, I am not as woman. Naked shall I return to you. The Lord gave. The Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord is dear to all who call upon Him. To all who call upon Him in truth. Fear not. Quiet with Him. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Jesus said to her, He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, ye may be also. But we know that if your earthly house this tabernacle is destroyed. We have a building from God. A house not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. to this family.
as we gather in sadness. To say farewell, to say good night. I want to encourage this family to know that we serve a God that and he and he only is able to bring comfort in times like these. He and he alone is able to restore joy. But we got to let him. No, I'm not saying don't cry. I'm not saying no more. But Jesus himself said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. What I am saying, however, is that we must worship a holy, a righteous, and a loving God. It's in times like these that we worship God. As we give him praise, honor, and glory. Because you think about it. Of all the people in the world that God could have chosen to be a part of the family of Virgie Presley. Of all the people in the world that God could have chosen to be a part of his life. He chose us. For that we say thank you. So I want to encourage you to sing along with every song that is sung, pray along with every prayer that is prayed, read along with every scripture that is read, and allow God to do what only he can do. He will lighten your load. He will restore your joy. When we recognize that he's worthy, to be praised. I want to ask all preachers that are with us today if you will sit and stand. Because I want this family to know that God did not spare his anointing. That he sent his anointing that this family might be comforted today. I thank each and every one of you for your presence, and I pray that God will use you for ministry in the midst of this service. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to have, first of all, one of the pastors, Pastor Bela Nguyen, and he will come to read scripture, followed by the prayer of comfort by Apostle David uh, Michael Saunders. Amen? In that order. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Father, we want to thank God for His glorious day. Yes. I'm going to be reading this, uh, Ecclesiastic, started um, Ecclesiastic. Uh, chapter 3, starting at verse 1. To everything there is a season, and a time and a purpose for everything, uh, a purpose under the heavens. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what that, that which was planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to life. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rain and a time to sow. A time to keep silent, and a time to speak, and a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. What will, what profit have he that worketh, that wherein 
he labored. Uh, and thank you for the reading of the word. Our tradition is say, let the church say amen. Amen. Let's say amen one more time. Amen. And just to solidify our truth, say amen again. Amen. Hallelujah. So be it. Is what we said. Some things are out of our control. But that we're here, we are alive today. And I'm going to pray in just a moment. But I want to set the atmosphere. For this man, Bert T, was a mighty man and a true cousin and a friend. And as I prepare myself to enter into this prayer, I have to be very careful. Because I hadn't seen him in a few years, but I saw his name. When visiting the VA hospital, I'm going to disable Patrick also. And I saw his name, B. Percy, on the screen. And I said, who could that be? With the spelling of the name, yes, that's my mother's name, spelled. And I came in the middle and I said, I called my older brother and said, where's your head at? <laughs> you know his name is Verti. <laughs> so the God be the glory and Bill said he's staying at the VA hospital. Okay. I never got a chance to visit him. But in my travels to the VA hospital, I saw his name up on the monitor many times. And I began to smile to know that he was in a good and safe place. Amen. So to the family, as we enter into this prayer, let's pray. Amen. Eternal merciful, mighty God, we come thanking and praising you for all that you have done for this family and in the life of virtue pressing over. For his name was Jellyhead. Do not know how the name was arrived, God. But you can talk to his sisters, sisters and brothers and see many what that name came about. And he has a host of cousins that are here today too. Maybe one of them may have even given him that name. But Father God, we pray, Lord, you have to follow that very team. The light and the legacy he leaves behind, Lord, brings back many memories, smiles, laughter, and joy. And he could dance a little bit also back in the day. Amen. And he, he, he was able to cut people's hair and make sure they was looking good when they went out. Amen. He did many things, Lord Heaven and Father, so we know that his legacy will never be forgotten. Wow. His legacy will go on from day in, on and day out, Lord. And we just pray that the family will realize, Lord, that God allowed for a season in their life. Those who have got to know him, he allowed you that season to know her team or Jellyhead. He allowed you that opportunity because he knew there was something special about her team. And you had to experience it to help compel you in your choices in your life and which way you would go and which way you would turn. So we're a team as we say goodbye but we say you're not forgotten. You would always have an intricate part in our lives. And to the family greatest he is in you today than he is in the world. You will arise and you will go forward and you will share the legacy and the stories of her team. In the times when you want to cry or you know, times are getting hard and we Want to mourn, but yet still, you will say, What would he have said in that moment? Why don't you go ahead and smile? Why don't you go ahead and laugh? Don't worry about me, I'll be all right. So, Father, we ask these blessings right now. In the matchless name, our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. And not it be foreign or strange, but it is in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Can we say praise the Lord again? Praise the Lord. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Amen? Amen. There are a lot of words that can be said, but at the end of the day, no words really would take the grief away. Only the comfort of the Holy Spirit can do that work. Amen? Amen. So just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Amen. Say the Lord is here right now. Come on, look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Say, the Lord is here right now. Right and if you know the Lord is here to comfort you, lift your hand and take about 10 seconds just to thank him. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. And we bless you. There's a hymn that goes like this. Pass me not.
Psalms 97, 91, verse 11. Asking God to hold you close and give you strength at this difficult time with heartfelt thoughts and prayers. Father Benjamin Farmer and family. Let there be memories. Let there be memories, more re re reflections and special occasions that every day, every day, let your heart start on this journey to heal by feeling the comfort remember, re remembering brings. Let there be memories, pictures, mementos, and favorite stories, both funny and sad. Let your mind wander and pass a remembrance. Relieve the joys and the good times that we have. My condolences and thoughts and prayers. May God's peace embrace you and your family in this deep months and your at your and ahead. Love Josie. The special people in our lives are never really gone. Mm -hmm. They have a cherished place in our hearts that they'll always be remembered for the love they share and the happiness they brought. Thinking of you with sympathy and hoping you find special memories by coming to you Martin and family, Sandra, Juanita, and Mark. Now I'm going to read the official word. Bertie Douglas Preston Jr. was born April the 27th, 1949 to the late Bertie D. Preston Sr. and Alice B. Preston. On December the 24th, 2023, Bertie entered internal rest at the Canterbury Rehab and Health Care Center in Harlem, Virginia. He grew up in, in Williamsburg, Virginia, and was educated in the Williamsburg J.C. County Public School System. During his younger years, he accepted Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. He joined the United States Marine Corps in August of 1968 and served in Vietnam. Um, Bertie was awarded the National Defense Service Medal, Medal, the Vietnam Service Medal, and the Good Conduct Medal, and received an honorary discharge as a private first class. He was trained as a cosmetology and worked at several barber and beauty salons in the Virginia area. He was excellent at his craft, and at times you would see Bertie in the yard at the family home on Long Hill Road in Manhattan. Bertie spent time in Washington, D.C. area. He worked at the Cavaliers Men's Store. He was, he was a sharp dresser and was always dressed to the night, right down to the socks and shoes. He always spent time, he, he has also spent time in California, where he became friends with the famed Frankie Beverly. He called his sisters girly girls and his brother George, my friend, bro. He was humble and mild mannered until you messed with his food. <laughs> <laughs> then he had, you had a problem. Bertie family called him Jelly Eater. These cherish his memory and his sister Carolyn P. Harvey of Largo, Maryland. Wilhelmina Mack of Williamsburg, Virginia, Renita Hyman of Columbus, South Carolina, Benicia Wynn of Stockton Hills, Georgia, Brother George Pressy of Williamsburg, Virginia, and a host of nieces, nephews, and cousins in Caring Commons. <laughs> Bertie, our brother, we thought of you today. That is nothing new. We thought of you yesterday and the day before that, too. You left us beautiful memories. Your love is still our guide. And though we could not see you, you'll always be outside. Be by outside. God has you in his arms. We will forever keep you in our hearts. Loving you through our infinity. Rest, dear brother, rest. The family. Special
special thank, special thanks to the dedicated staff that care over our team over the years. We are grateful to both Rita, Assistant Living, and, and the Canterbury Rehab and Healthcare Centers. Acknowledgement. The, the Pressy family wishes to express their sincere gratitude and appreciation for all the kind expressions of sympathy, prayers, love, and shown to all of us. Your friendship and support during our time of sorrow will always remain in our memories and hearts. The professional services entrusted to the staff at the Whiting Funeral Home at 7005 Pocahontas Trail, Williamsburg. Thank you. Before this next selection, we're going to prepare ourselves for reflections. And we're not denying anyone the opportunity to share. However, except for those on this immediate front row, if they decide to share later, that's fine. But everyone else who cares to share in the reflections, please just line yourself up on the wall with me. For this next selection. Now, the reason for that is we want to kind of get an idea as to how many. And once we find out how many, you might be able to say a lot. And if it's a lot of people, then you will have to kind of limit what you say. Amen? Yeah. So it's, it's, just for, it's just for us to understand the number. So if you, if you desire to share a reflection, please. Don't think for one moment that we're trying to deny you that opportunity that we would like to see you in advance. Amen? Amen. 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 So if you can just get started, even while the selection, if the selection gets you moved and you got to jump up and shout, you can shout on around and get loud. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Anita asked me to sing this song. I haven't sung it in years. But how do you realize that Earth is not our home? Amen. We got to be ready. Amen? Amen. One day Jesus is coming back. Mm -hmm. And this is of no disrespect, but I have the duty as minister of the gospel. And that is we have to make sure our souls are ready Amen. when Jesus comes. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah.
<laughs> I love y'all. I love her tea. And if we take nothing from this, take all the good that her tea gave all of us. First of all, I want to say we thank God for the anointing in the room, the comfort, the counsel that He has sent. Hallelujah. This is a, a beautiful story to me. This family, the way that I came into their lives was George had children. He had young children with Omega Hall. And um, they needed a little parenting help. So I was called to, to come into the home and help. And um, not um, help in a way of taking over, but watching their skill set and adding to it. Now, the thing about it is that I saw a village. We don't have a village anymore. I saw a village in this home. When I came into the home, they all were watching me. <laughs> Every last one, Wilhelmina, <laughs> Verti, and George, they were all watching me. But the beauty of it was they would sit. They would come in and be in the midst of the home visit. So there was extended family there. George was a little apprehensive, and he would sit a little farther away, and uh, I would, you know, get him involved, and there were times that uh, he would come over uh, uh, himself and uh, get into the uh, atmosphere of working with his children. The other thing about it was that I saw uh, Verti, and uh, I needed someone to cut my hair. My barber had left, and I don't let just any, anyone cut my hair. And uh, someone said, well, Verti cuts hair. And I was like, okay, well, I'll give it a shot. And he began to cut my hair. He cut my hair, my hair for about eight years and did an exceptional job. But the other thing that was so wonderful about the family, they were related to the family that I love and, and, and dear, the other Pressies. So that made it a whole lot easier. So I just thank God for Verti. I thank God for his life. I just want to say one more thing. He's free. He's no longer bound, no more chains holding him, his soul is rested, oh it's a blessing. Uh, he's catch a ride and I go to Richmond Hull Street and drive him on the 
my cousin up there. Mm -hmm. So going on Route 5, going up, going up there, and, and that's where we get to go. And I was speeding, because then I looked mm -hmm. behind me, and with this car coming, the lights right through, I said, oh, crap. The car coming for speeding. When I got when he came inside me, it was a, a Corvette, it was like a 64, something right on the time. He went by me. And I said, Jelly, I'm going to get him. He said, no, Bill. <laughs> and so, and then the old man, he was no man. I, I went out and so they brought the bridge on Route 5 and get so And I, I, I went by that bed. And so he was trying to catch me, so he, he wouldn't get, he wouldn't slow up. So we got up there for sure the plantation. It's a curve go just like that. And I don't know how fast I was going, but I was going, but I was running and and that car together, and, and Jelly hit on the field, Bill. He got down on the floor, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I slowed down, and, and I hit that, hit that curve, and I went around and get, went, I went to that curve, boy. He said, boy, I don't want to catch you to Richmond no more. <laughs> Visit uh, my uncle Bertie a couple days before he passed. Oh, mm -hmm. And uh, I took his brother George, <clears throat> and uh, I said, uh, Uncle Bertie, your uh, your brother George here to see you. I said, say hello, George. Uncle Virgie said, hi, George. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I said, do you recognize him? And he, he said, yeah, Virgie speaking. He said, yeah. And uh, took a few pictures with him, said prayer. Yeah. And uh, he seemed at ease. Shortly after we left, they called and said, it just turned for the worse. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to tell you that if your family members on your heart, don't hesitate to reach out. Even if you haven't seen them 10, 15 years or two weeks. Because it seemed like uh, after Uncle George stayed with a visit with him, it was that time. And some of us didn't get to go see him, you know, due to different circumstances. But everybody was with him. And uh, I have no doubt, you know, that God said, okay, it's your time. And he was thankful that he got to see his brother. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, Uncle Bertie was that uncle that uh, let you get away with a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as, as a nephew. You know, he, he let me drive when I was 13. I didn't have, to, you know, I didn't have a license. You know, he didn't give me a license until he was 16. <laughs> but he let me drive when I was 13. You know, Uncle Tony let me drive the same way. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, it's just important if, if your family member or your friend, anybody comes across your heart. Yes. Just a thought. Yes. Pick up the phone. Amen. If it's a text, email, phone call, because you never know. Amen. Amen. And uh, so I'm thankful that uh, Uncle Bertie has you know, been in my life my whole life. Amen. And I was able to learn some things from him. Amen. And uh, he gave his, sh his shirt off his back Amen. to anybody. And uh, I love him, and I always will until I die. Amen. That's all I want to say. Amen. Amen. Jelly. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he did like 
this time that God gives you to come. I see that there is a selection of four of us. Okay, 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 okay. First of all, I would like to give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ just for allowing me to be here. And I would like to say to my family, because you're more family than you are my family, I would like to say to my family, this is only temporary. This too shall pass. And I would also like to let you know that this request, Jesus promised me a home, came about 15 years ago from the dean. And she called me up and she says, um, saying, you know what? I'm like, well, I want you to sing at my funeral, Jesus promised me a home. She goes, me again. She's making preparations already. So um, when she hung up, you know what I did, right? I called Tommy. I said, Tanya, he was like, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> and she just told me um, she wanted me to sing Jesus promised me a home over there at her funeral. Oh. You might need to check her out. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm so glad that I'm able to give you those flowers oh, <laughs> while you're <yeah>. living. <laughs> because, girl, you can't do nothing with this. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be over. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But Jesus promised me a home. Over there. Amen. You can turn it up some place. Thank you. Give your whole life.
shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on in corruption and this mortal must put on immortality We're going to talk just a little while from this subject. Verti changed for the last time. Let us pray. Father, we pray now that you speak to us. As we hunger and thirst after righteousness, you declare that we shall be clean. Use now, dear God, this your man say. That these your people might hear a word from you. But we know that a word can change things. A word can create things. A word can bring comfort and soon our pain. So speak, Lord. For in Jesus' name that we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Bertie was one who was not only conscious of the appearance of others, Not only was Bertie concerned about making others look better, because you know for yourself that if you get your hair done, you get it trimmed up just right, you do look a little better. So Bertie was concerned about folk looking better. That's why he took so much care in how he did a hit. But not only did he care about the appearance of others, Virgie was concerned about his appearance. Virgie would put on clothing fit for whatever the occasion was. Virgie would make sure that he was among the better dressed, no matter what the occasion was. The family and everyone else talked about how he dressed to the nine. The family talked about how he 
kept up with the latest stuff. You see, working in a clothing store, you can do that. You are conscious and aware of when things change, and you're conscious and aware of what styles come in. And you get to see them first, working in a clothing store. So he would always be conscious of what he had on. But found here in this book, of 1 Corinthians and this 15th chapter. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about another change. Yes. A change that we all must go through. Yes. I don't care what the latest style is, this style Amen. is always in style. Amen. I know every now and then you pull something out of the closet and Someone would look at it and say, when did you keep up with the style? And you say, no, I just dug deep. Come on. Uh, well, I want you to understand that when you start talking about glory, when you start talking about heaven, we must understand that there is a style that will come in. That style is lacking flesh. For flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yes. So Bertie, like all of us, had to undergo one more change. All right. You see, I don't care how you dress it up. And I don't care how you fix it up. These mortal bodies will slowly lose some of its appeal and appearance. I don't care how you exercise. I don't care how you try to keep the body strong. Eventually, the body grows weary and began to fail. I shared many times with some young folk. They say, Pastor, can you still jump? I say, yes, I can still jump. But I got a landing problem. <laughs> because the body cannot really handle the impact of landing. So whether I can jump or not doesn't matter. I know better than to jump. That's because these bodies don't remain strong forever. These bodies slowly begin to fail. We don't run as fast as we used to run. We don't Walk like we used to walk. We wake up in the morning and we begin to take inventory. Feet. Are you all right this morning? Legs. Are you okay this morning? Uh, when I get ready to rise up, back. Are you going to work with me today? We began to take inventory because the body is slowly decaying. Yes. Many of us call this the land of the living, but I suggest to you that this is the land of the dying. But there is a place where sickness would never occur again. There is a place where the wicked would cease from trouble. And the weary shall be at rest. There's a place where there be no more crying. There is a place where we don't have to have any more needles. There's a place where there's no more doctor's visits. No more nurses probing. No more people looking and saying, how are you today? But you can look at them and say, I'm blessed by the best because I want you to know that there is no more crying there is no more dying but in order to get to that place and I'm talking about glory you gotta have one more change now you first gotta change by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior when you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Uh -huh. The Bible says that you're quickened. Uh -huh. In other words, the spirit uh -huh. becomes alive. Yes. 
Yeah. When the spirit becomes alive, I got to tell you, that spirit will bear a witness to God's spirit that your children are the most high God. So you don't have to be unsure about your salvation. Because God won't let you know. So when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, all of your ears, all of your wrongs are forgiven. Now I know some say that's a hard thing to accept. Because I've done so much in my life. But I gotta tell you, I got good news for you. I don't care how much you've done. I don't care how far you have gone. God will call you back and he will invite you in and say, come you blessed of my father. I gotta tell you, when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, uh-huh. your name is changed. Uh-huh. You say, wait a minute, how, how the name change? Uh-huh. Because they just simply call me me head, uh-huh. fat head, uh-huh. big head. Uh-huh. No, they call me a saint. Uh-huh. Not that I've been so good. Not because I've done all the right things. But they call me a saint. Because Jesus died for my sins, shed his precious blood to pay the wages for my sins. And now I'm the righteousness of Christ. Through Christ Jesus. But I gotta make one more change. I gotta make this last change. I need to tell old flesh. You can't go with me. I got to tell this old blood. I don't need you running warm in my veins. Because I got to put off that stuff that's going bad. I got to put off this old body that's starting to fade away. I got to put off and leave it behind. Because now I got to put on a whole new outfit. I'm going to be clothed in righteousness. I got to put on a whole new outfit. What do you mean? Well, flesh and blood can't go with me. But I'm going to inherit the kingdom of God. So I got to put off those old clothes. I got to put on some new clothes. What do you mean? I got to put on something that won't fade away. I got to put on something that won't die anymore. I got to put on something that Russ won't take advantage of. I got to put on something that won't go weary and won't go tired. Because it says this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this life soon I'm going to lay it down. But I won't die. Because I believe in Jesus. And I'm going to now just simply change my address. You're going to look for me in my old house. I won't be there no more. But I got to tell you, with this new body, I'm going to be in a new place. And I got to tell you, this new place is where immortality shall take place. I don't have to worry about ever dying again. I don't have to worry because God will take care of me. I don't have to worry because I'm going to have a home in the sky after I make my last change. Her team has made his last change. And now, in 1 Corinthians, it says, Now, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? You see, the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks, somebody say, but thanks, but thanks be to God. 
which gives us the victory. Yes. He gives us the victory. Yes. Some say it's over. No, no, no. I got the victory. Yes, yes Lord. Thank you. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. God bless you. Amen. Amen. If I did not extend the opportunity for someone to have the experience of a relationship with a loving God. Many days ago, someone told me, they said, you know, Pastor, I'd accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, but I, I don't want to live. I said, what do you mean, but you want to live? If you really want to live, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. If you really want to live. You see, I shared many times in this congregation. I said, you know, I was guilty of trying to live one time too. Amen. Friday night would come. There be. Trying to get the party stuff. Get all messed up. Or I, I call myself having fun, but when I look back, I see the hurt that it was causing me and to others. For all of the celebrating on Friday night. I miss all of Saturday. Head hurt. Don't want nobody to talk loud. All because I was having fun on Friday night. I was setting myself up for losing one seventh of my whole life behind celebrating on Friday. Because I didn't own Saturdays anymore. Saturdays owned me. I realized one day when I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me. All that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And God opened my eyes. And I can see that there is a better life that God has in store for me. You see, when I used to worry all the time, He took the weary out of my life. peace that I never could think I could have. Then I began to smile more. Because he gave me joy. Unspeakable joy. Joy that didn't matter what was going on around me. But joy that was very deep on the inside. That nobody can take away. So the answer is Jesus. Who says to someone that they come. I'll give you life. If you're here today. And you know that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. I'm not going to ask you to go through a whole lot of formalities, but if you just raise your hand right where you are and ask God to come into your life and save your soul, then there's a changing room waiting for you, too. 
when you get put off, incorruptible. They put on incorruptible.
United States Marine Corps. Uh, great formation. He looks at this flag as a symbol for appreciation for your loved one, honorable, and faithful service. Well, it's please, Almighty God, to take unto himself Bertie Douglas Pressinger, Jr., who offered this body to the place that has been prepared for it. The earth might return to earth, dust may return to dust, ashes may return to ashes, but the encouraging spirit may forever be with. The Lord, I'm going to ask Apostle Sandra Zippy to have us in prayer. Let us pray. May the peace of God be with us as the past of the storm. The rest will be by now, henceforth and ever more. As we leave out this place and this environment, there will never forget what we experienced on the day. But we're here to tell the story. To the family, our love goes out. And our care goes on. And this one that we're here for you, if you have need of us. We get still, Lord. The legacy of our team will live on through us, Lord. And we give you glory, honor, and praise, and majesty as you go to your new home in heaven. <coughs> and the glory, honor, and praise was in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Let the body of Christ say, Amen. 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 At this time, I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the family to thank you, Dr. Ellis, Apostle Saunders, other clergymen and women in attendance for your love, support, and prayers to this beautiful family. I would also like to thank each and every one of you that have come out to rally around each other. All I see here is family, but one thing about the presses is everybody is family. If you know them, you love them. If you don't love them, you don't know them. So everybody, whether you blood or not, that don't always make you family, but love does. So it's, it's a pleasure to see each and every one of you out here to show your love for the family, to show your love that you have for Brother Bertie, better known as Jellyhead. Thank you, and God bless you for your time on today. And to the family of Mr. Preston, on behalf of Tyrus and for White East Funeral Home, it has been a great honor and a privilege to stand with you during this time. And as a token of our appreciation for allowing us this opportunity, I do want to present to the family this memorial plaque in love and memory of Mr. Bertie Douglas Pressey Jr. Better know this, Jelly here. My prayer family is that you will receive this plaque with the same amount of love and the same amount of prayer that went into creating it just for you. This does conclude the homegoing celebration services for Mr. Pressey. But the fellowship does not stop here. I encourage each and every one of you to join the family back in the fellowship hall here at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church for some, not only some good food, but some good fellowship yeah. and some good reflections of the times that you have had with Mr. Pressy, better known as Jellyhead. Amen. 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 God bless you. If I can have everybody, please rest on your feet at this time.